Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional goal player. Sometimes your opponent plays an approach move to your start point and you want to play a pincer. So today I'm going to be talking about the one space pincer and also the high one space pincer on the fourth line. So I'll be comparing these two moves and the following um, basic corner sequence or joseki. And I'll keep to the most basic variation and show you how the two moves end up uh, with black playing slightly differently. And actually, in the case of the low pincer, the way we play it has changed in recent years. So I'll be talking about that. And I hope to introduce ideas that will be useful in a general fashion also. So just to go through the starting moves, black has played this big corner enclosure in the upper left corner. And so it's natural to think that black will now want to build on the upper side, just because this corner enclosure does control, it does have influence towards these two directions. So the upper side of the board and the left side of the board are two directions in, in which black will want to develop. Of course, it's perfectly okay to play a move like this also, but today I'm going to discuss the two pincers here. So white has a variety of moves that white can play in response to this. But today I'm going to just talk about the 3-3 three, three invasion. This is actually the most popular move and probably the most successful move among top professionals. When white plays here, black has two directions from which to cover. It can be on this side or on this side. And I'm going to say that this is actually better because of the three marked stones that black has already played. So black has invested three stones in the upper left part of the board, or on the upper side in the upper left part of the board. That means that black is having plans or hopes to build on that area in the upper left. So it makes sense for black to be covering from this side and helping black to build that. That said, I can show you the other uh, covering move also. This one um, is also a Josek, it's a basic corner sequence. And just to give one example, something like this might happen. In this case, Black's wall is pointing in a different direction. It's pointing in this direction towards the right side of the board. And so it's pointing in a direction that Black has not really developed yet. And White can play a move there, which will, to a certain degree, it will nip Black's plan in the bud. So Black will have trouble now developing the right side on a large scale. And surrounding territory on a small scale like this would not really be that satisfying. It would be something like 10 or at the most um, 20 points. Sticking to that wall, it's a bit too close. So I won't really go into detail about how I would try to make this work. And I'll just say that it's going to be a bit more difficult when Black's wall is sort of pointing in the wrong direction. So it makes a lot more sense for black to be covering for black to be covering from this side, which cooperates with the stones already played. So coordinating your moves with the stones that you've already put on the board is always very important, especially in the opening when it's relatively difficult to read out what is eventually going to happen to calculate. But you can have these ideas about how your stones are working together overall. So when black plays this move, the joseki is for white to crow once, and now white plays this forcing move on the second line. So this is actually a rare case where white is going to play a move on the second line because this exchange, this forcing exchange, white is threatening to cut on the third line here. So if black plays away, White will be able to cut here, so that would be bad for Black. So Black has to answer and White jumps. So this is the basic Joseki. The fact that White played that forcing move on the second line to get a line of three stones, that protects the hole when White makes the one, one space jump. So it um, prevents Black from successfully pushing through and cutting here. So that's the basic idea behind this Joseki. Um, the fact that White has reinforced the corner first. So now black can play away. Um, a move like this, for instance, a, a move on the upper side would be something like this, or black could play towards the center. Black has a lot of choices. In general, 
um, it's not a good idea to lose a tempo or to play too many moves in the local position. So I would say it's good for black to play away like this. Um, and I would probably choose this approach move in the lower left. I think if you researched it with an AI, like one of those super um, superhuman computers, you might see them suggesting some of the 3-3 invasions. So for instance, something like this or something like this might be suggested by an AI. The idea is that you probably want to play away in any case. So this is the example of the basic Joseki. And one thing that I'm going to focus on here is this final move that Black has played. So first, let's look at the other pincer. When Black has played a high pincer, again, the most common move for White is to jump into the 3-3 point. And again, Black doesn't really want to cover from the right side. So Black does have two choices here, but Pla probably wants to play on this side, building a wall which is going to work together with the stones that Black has already put on the board in the upper left area, for instance. Uh, so just to show you the other variation, again, Black is going to have trouble making the best use of this wall, which is pointing towards the right side of the board and white had the tempo to play the first move on the right side. So it's going to be difficult for black to make full use of that wall there. I would suggest that black should uh, cover on this side. Um, it's not as if such a difference will lose the game for you, um, but it does make it more difficult to continue. And up to this point, it's actually the same Joseki, although I'm going to say in this variation where black has a pincer on the fourth line, it's better to connect, and it will be like this. And again, black will play away. So the way I finished this Joseki with the nine, the move nine here is different depending on where the black pincer was. So I'm going to talk about that a little. And we can compare these two variations. So uh, here we have the two pincers with the same Joseki variant. And when white connects on the second line, on the right black connects. And on the left, uh, with the low pincer, black is crawling. And um, to look at this crawling move, actually, it's a fairly recent development. We had been playing it in some of our games before. But the mainline move was actually to connect here. And some players would crawl. In fact, I've crawled myself in some of my games. But it was generally considered better to connect. And this changed when we started researching this Joseki with AIs. Um, so that would be computer programs such as, well, I think it started with AlphaGo, but then Katago, Leela, Zero. There's a number of uh, computer programs that play Go better than the best human players. And pretty um, universally, they will suggest crawling on the second line. And this is uh, something that changed the way we played this Joseki. And also, I think I understand it. And so it's something that I think I can explain here, and I'm going to make an attempt. So when this Joseki ends and Black plays away, playing away in the opening is very important. Taking the tempo to play a big opening point, rather than spending a lot of moves in one local area. That's a kind of a general, generally important thing in the opening of the game. It's not good to play a lot of moves in just one area and losing tempos and giving your opponent control of the rest of the board is generally a bad thing. So it's good for black to be able to play away here. And the point is, with this crawling move on the second line, this black group does not really have any weak points. So for instance, if white tries to cut black with a cut here, for instance, this is going to be a very bad fight for, for white. Uh, black will start with this move, for instance. Uh, black has a number of ways to punish white's move, but black could just play here and here, and um, it just gets worse. So I'm, I'm not really going to too much detail, but um, if white pushes through here, black four is basically, it's, it's pretty much a forcing move towards the right also, and white is already in trouble in the center of the board also. also. So it's it's just bad all over for white. So white does not really have any strong attack against this black wall. But if we go into this variation where black plays away, 
White actually has some options here. So, um, in fact, we were noticing that towards the end. Before we started using AIs, people were noticing that. And in some games, for instance, you will see people covering on the second line, among other moves. And when white does this, if black covers on the top, and white plays an Atari here, it's going to be really painful shape if black plays here. This is an empty triangle. You can see black is forming an empty triangle with these stones here. So that's already bad shape. And if white connects here, uh, white is connected on the first line while black is cut off. So black can try to squeeze here, but black needs to escape here. And white has still has the corner territory. And this white stone, the cutting stone on the fourth line, it cannot be captured. So black is potentially going to have a weak group there in the center of the board. Sometimes this could happen almost immediately. So to start again, um, maybe black's going to play a honey underneath. In which case something like this might happen. And white has potential to move into the upper side of the board. If black pulls back, white can extend. And this would be um, also a very complicated and difficult fight. It would um, White would not necessarily be doing this immediately, but it is a very dangerous thing that could happen. Black's best option is probably to play here and connect underneath when White plays the target. So this is maybe Black's best local option. White is getting the corner and is capturing a stone towards the center of the board. So in some cases, this is going to be good for White. And this is not the only move that white has as an option. White has a number of moves, such as the jump or the extension. Or sometimes white will start from the side here, looking at that uh, covering move on the second on the second line. So black has some weaknesses here, whereas if black plays the more modern move, black does not have any real weaknesses. So that's the important difference here between these two moves. And I think most professionals have agreed that crawling here is the better local move. So this is the basic Joseki. So now to look at the shape on the right here. In this case, I've connected. And this should uh, help to demonstrate the difference between the position where black has played a pincer on the third line and the position where black has played a pincer on the fourth line. Because if black had played the crawling move here, then black would be left with a weakness now. If black plays away, white can extend here. And in this case, the fact that um, black's stone was on the fourth line allows white to break through like this. And again, this will be a very complicated fight in which black is also going to be in danger. So this is a bit... Um, I'm not sure that white would play it immediately, but it would be very dangerous for black. So black avoids that weakness by connecting here. And in this case, when white continues with this move, um, it's just so much better. Let's compare it with the shape on the left. The connection between black's stones, if we compare these two shapes, is much better when black has that stone, when black has this stone on the fourth line. The connection of black's stones is just so much better when black has this stone on the fourth line, um, making a one space jump. So white doesn't have uh, the option of doing stuff like this. The best white could do would be to connect on the second line, on the first line maybe. And black would uh, black could play away or could cover on the third line here. So there's nothing bad that's happening. Otherwise, if white plays towards the center, Black can always connect on the second line. So this is not going to be a big problem for black either. So it's all the idea of creating a, a shape that does not have any glaring weaknesses. That does not have a good move for the opponent to aim at. And it's different in these two, two cases. So in, in the case of the high pincer, black is already fairly well coordinated with that stone on the side by connecting here. Whereas on the with the low pincer, black is well coordinated with that stone by connecting up to it immediately. 
And because the black stone is on the third line here, black has already linked up with it. So that's a difference. And I think the general idea of looking at the stones that you've already put on, this, on the board is something that even fairly advanced players sometimes miss. But it's always important to coordinate with the stones you've already played. And I think this is a good example of it. So that was my example of the basic joseki and how the way we play differs uh, depending on whether the pincer is on the third line or the fourth line. And um, that's it for this video. I will be talking about different moves for white at some later date. So I'll just finish this video here. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to sign up to my channel. Thank you.